women that fame, fortune, and both taking poops right across from each other. Today, we learn what being a gladiator was all about. These Roman fighters really had it as good as one can in an empire where you have to wipe your ass with a communal shit stick. Their social standing was similar to that of a concubine, yet they enjoyed many comforts the lower class did not have. It's a fact that these warriors hardly ever survived past their mid-twenties, but that's not too bad considering the average working class man at the time rarely lived past 30. And gladiators would have to fight only 3-5 to five times a year. In comparison, a WWE superstar has around 3 shows a week. So these dudes had lots of free time, and all they had to worry about during it was learning different techniques for not dying and getting bitches. As a gladiator, you were basically an A-list celebrity. Be triumphant and you get your face put on a bunch of stuff, die, and you get to meet Crepitus, the god of flatulence. Yes, Crepitus, I'm not making this up, but Christians like you did in the works of satire. Anyways, gladiators getting bitches. They were considered sex symbols, to the point where their sweat was being collected and used as an aphrodisiac. The warriors were encouraged to, I quote, use their bodies as instruments of carnal lust and have sex with as many wealthy people as possible. That being said, it wasn't uncommon for gladiators to be hired as elite bodyguards by the wealthy. After all, they were highly skilled trained warriors. However, many married women took advantage of this and would hire a gladiator bodyguard for just one night every once in a while with different expectations. Sure, they can save you from a bunch of fees, but they won't be able to save your marriage, Calliope. And on the subject of trying not to die, as a gladiator, you really weren't expected to actually die in a fight. Yes, the duels were originally meant to be done to the death and to honor the spirit of the dead at filthy, literally filthy, rich people's funerals. But public gore was so enjoyable that the Roman elite thought, hey, you know who would lose their minds if they saw this? The peasants. Oh yes, as organizers, we could use this to gain political favor and display the growth of the empire by showing people different ways of murdering all the cool animals I found. Excellent idea, Julius Caesar. But these big boys were expensive to feed, house and train. Why kill an investment like this? So, after a few decades, it was most often criminals that were made to fight to the death. The organizer would ensure at least one dies by basically blindfolding them with the world's most uncomfortable helmet that barely lets you breathe, much less see. Or, you know, simply leaving them naked amidst what I can only describe as a malnourished open zoo. The actual gladiator combat was mostly theater. They were taught to perform a good show and to inflict epic looking wounds. Not kill, well, rarely kill. And this required a certain physique. The fighters had three hearty meals a day, but those meals were usually bean mush or barley, sprinkled with some bone ash and charred wood to make up for the lack of calcium. Yum, right? Well, they had to eat like this because a fighter's ideal body required a substantial layer of protective fat. A leaner body with less fat to shield the nerves and blood vessels in the fight would sustain more damage from a cut, while fighting with surface wounds looked way more brutal and cool in the eyes of the spectators. Spectators. And the more exciting the fight is, the more likely it is for both men to live. So for the most part, it was a show like, oh no, this superficial wound will definitely kill me. Wink, wink. And after all that's done, you and your bro can get the best treatment possible from Roman doctors at the time, which was smearing actual pig shit on the wounds. But maybe also a nice oral massage during the halftime animal slaughter. Oh, see, honey, I promised you'd see an ostrich. Wow. Oh my god. Oh, hey there, kid. Look, this was specifically designed to murder this animal. You wanna hold it? <laughs> Isn't that nice? Take the weapon from the nice, sexy man I'm cheating on your father with. Take it. Jokes on her, Romans for a fact used piss to brush their teeth. But the Romans saw viciousness as erotic, and the more handsome gladiators were held in high esteem. That's also the reason female gladiators wore less armor. So these handsome, successful gladiators could also be very rich. Charioteers would be paid 15 times more than popular athletes are today. So to sum up, Historians universally agreed that there was no television in ancient Rome. I fact-checked this, don't worry. What they did have, though, was a coliseum and a bunch of cute guys mutilating each other on the arena. Filled with water, on boats, with lions jumping on them. And the pros of being one of these men were fame, fortune, fucking, doctors, shit sticks, free accommodation, free food, 
and a chance to earn your freedom in five or so years. Cons? Um, murdering your friends? How is that designed to be terrible? Death, shit sticks, and no rights. But was being a gladiator cool? Yeah, it was pretty cool. Was it better than like being an accountant in modern times? I don't know. Inconclusive. This is an open discussion. Participate in the comments or fight to the death for my own viewing pleasure.